Hello, and welcome back to the Unscripted Podcast. <laughs> we are here today to do our usual sit down and talk about what's going on in the world. It's funny because um, during the weekend, I was trying to think about show topics that we were going to talk mm. about, and I was like, I have nothing to talk about. I even said to like, well not much is happening like there's not gonna not gonna be every something every week but then on tiktok i don't know what i don't know what i don't know but like the news girlies on tiktok i follow a lot of news girlies who are like fast who are in with the times who know what's going on before it happens and so on friday i think they were saying that supposedly like people were talking saying that a big media outlet or several media outlets were going to come out over the weekend and expose a few comedians. And I was like, what the, f who is it? Like we were, everyone was like making their guesses. Um, and it came out who it was. Is it like a weekly thing? Is it like, cause, cause I noticed that the word was comedians, like plural. Yeah. Are they right? Cause that was just one, I, I right, I assume Russell? that there's probably more. Yeah, so it came out, the Russell Brand allegations came out this weekend, and they are a lot. So we'll touch on that a little bit. I hate it because, like, last week was a little heavy because of the subject um, matter we were talking yeah. about, and then this week it's going to get a little heavy as well. But we're going to try to keep it light, as light as possible, and just keep it moving. Um but we have some interesting stories in here today. So, nice segue because, thank you, let me just pat myself on the back. <laughs> because mentioning last week's episode with the Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis drama, there's been an update. Um, yeah, there's been an update. So The killer escaped. The ki <laughs> nah, <it's true. laughs> He's escaping. The killer's escaping. Whatever happened. What happened? What happened? Who? The Ripper. Um, I think he got put to jail. Oh, actually, I think they sentenced him to the death sentence. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Is that... Do they have... Do we have the death sentence here in California? It was... Still? Oh, yeah, it was here. Well, it was the Hollywood Ripper, so... I, I honestly don't know. <clears throat> Chat, is this real? Yeah. <laughs> I do not know. Mm, I'm too lazy to look it up, yeah. so... <laughs> but, um... So, the update? The update, correct. Thank you. So basically, um, you know the the company that the anti child trafficking organization that Ashton Kutcher founded, co founded, um, they stepped down. Oh yeah, yeah, they stepped down. I honestly forgot what the update was. I was like, what was the update? Yeah, it happened like two days ago, but um, a, it's big. It's pretty big. Yeah, it's. I mean, I don't know. Why. What are your thoughts about this? Well, let me get into it really quick for those that don't know. Um, so after receiving a bunch of backlash for writing the character letters as they did, um, they decided to step away from their organization, Thorn, that Ashton co-founded with his ex-wife, Demi Moore, where he served as the chair of the board, the chairman of the board. So he was like... A big person. In short, he basically said victims of SA have been historically silenced and the character statement I submitted is yet another painful instance of questioning victims who are brave enough to share their experiences. Um, he spent the last couple of days with personal reflection, learning, and talking to survivors. Um, but because of what he did, he feels that it's only responsible for him to resign effective immediately. He said, I cannot allow my error in judgment to distract from our efforts and the children we serve. I understand that he made a huge, he, he fucked up. <laughs> he fucked, fucked up, up in yeah. short. And like we went over this in great detail last episode and we disagree with everything that he did. But I feel like you can admit your wrongs and, and still continue to do your work exactly. and improve and do better. Like why step away from I don't know this work that you are so passionate about right and you make one mistake a big one my might I add but does that really dismiss all your I don't know what what specific work he's done I don't know if this is all a front but like if he is who he says he is 
how does that dismiss all of the work that he's done and yeah. shouldn't he continue? Whatever. I feel like it contradic- contradicts his own like statement. You know, like, I, sh- I shouldn't let it distract from mm-hmm. our efforts, you know? So then, you know, take your mistake, learn from it, and do better. What I did hear that possibly happened was that they could have, the organization could have possibly asked him to resign and maybe they didn't want to, mm. like, embarrass him. So they so, told him, like, you resign yourself okay. and, like, make your peace with that and go out in a good way. That kind of makes sense. That makes sense. That's the only reason that I can, like, just yeah, justify it. Yeah, I, I would be okay with that. Yeah, because, like, <laughs> but if him it's just him, stepping just like, away. Uh, I'm going to step down because I fucked up <laughs> one time. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, but not also, time, but, but also, I did hear people talking about how maybe all the stuff that happened with Danny was a little too close to home because he was such good friends with him, and like all those inappropriate videos of him and Mila Kunis when they were younger, and maybe you know, maybe he does have a dark past that he's afraid will come out too, and he's just like, I don't know, mm. just resigning now before all the other stuff comes out. Maybe he he got spooked. He saw a glimpse into his future with Danny, and I'm not saying he is an R wordist, but I'm just saying like he had sketchy behavior, you know. In my opinion, yeah. He continued by saying the mission must always be the priority, and I want to offer my heartfelt apology to all the victims of SA and everyone at Thorn who I hurt by what I did, and to the broader advocacy community. I am deeply sorry. I remain proud of what we have accomplished in the past decade, and will continue to support Thorn's work. Thank you for your tireless advocacy and dedication to this cause. I mean, what can you say? Yeah, I don't know what he was <laughs> <laughs> what he was thinking when he did that. Like, if it wasn't like the organization telling him to step down, I don't mm-hmm. know what he thought he was doing with this. Yeah, he. I don't yeah. know if he thought he was like Jenna Marbles when she stepped down from YouTube. You know, <laughs> not <the same> <laughs> it's thing. not the same thing. But like, maybe he thought. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> he, he thought he ate, but <laughs> he did it. I don't know. That's yeah. That's just a little update. I mean, we'll see what happens in the coming weeks or whatever. But they really shot themselves in the foot with this whole shit. Like, I feel like. They their whole career just like crashed and burned in the span of like a minute <laughs> with all this shit that happened. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot. <clears throat> but moving on. Um, ugh, I don't want to move on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to move on because the next thing that we were going to talk about is um the whole Russell Brand allegations that came out like i mentioned over the weekend um people were suspecting that a comedian was going to get exposed by people who had um allegations against him and a media company was going to come out with it so behind the scenes of that is russell brand actually received word from those two mainstream media outlets saying that they had these stories of four women that are coming out against him, saying that he essayed them and that they were going to run the story, basically just giving him a heads up. And um, so he thought that he would get ahead of it by publishing a video to his Instagram, just basically denying everything before anything came out. So he came on his Instagram. I didn't watch the video, but I got the gist of it from other people talking about it, saying that... um, Basically, these accusations that are going to come out about me are completely false and blah, blah, whatever. Um, but it's kind of wild that he just <laughs> went ahead and and said anything before any of the allegations came out. Just to right. try, to, try to cover his tracks. Hey, something's coming out about you. Oh, it's a complete lie, folks. I mean, to be fair, I feel like maybe they did tell him what it was about. Oh, but okay. No, yeah, actually, they did tell him what it was about because then he went on to talk about how he's like, um, in my past, I've been very open about like my sexuality and that he's, I guess, he, back in the day, he was like promiscuous, his words, um, and that he slept around a lot. And but he was saying like it was always consensual, or whatever. Do you know who Russell Brand is? Because he's kind of like yeah, I've old. seen him in the in the movie. <laughs> what's it called? Um, 
Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Oh yeah, he's, that, he's the very forgettable. Guy. Oh well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so he didn't actually act at all. Um, <laughs> but I guess he was like a very well known comedian back back in the day. It wasn't that long ago, but like he wasn't our time by any means. But the only reason why I knew him was I also because saw he was a little bit of like his comedy specials. A little what? bit. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, the only reason why I knew him was because he was married to Katy Perry for like oh, right, a year, right, right. like a very short time. Um, and then he broke up with her. He divorced, like he said he was going to divorce her via text right before she went on to perform. And this really? was when she was recording her film, um, like for the tour or whatever. And like she was like devastated, heartbroken, like this poor oh, woman couldn't even like move. She was just like drowning in a puddle of tears. I didn't and even then hear about like that. she was just like, well, I got to go perform. And then she went on to perform and... Dang. Yeah. Was she crying? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Did you say that? Yeah, I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. So I put together a little summary of the allegations made against him, but I don't want to go too full into detail because <clears throat> obviously that's super triggering and a lot of the details are graphic and I don't want to go into that. Um, But I do think that the victim stories are obviously super important and they should be heard and listened to. So there is a full Times article that you can read and they Channel 4, which is like a news outlet in the UK, also published a documentary, which I really, really, really wanted to watch. But I think they released it on cable and also it's from the UK. So I don't even know how you go about streaming that. Mm -hmm. But um. I did see if you check out their Twitter, they posted like a trailer and a a few clips and stuff, um, which I saw that and that was like very interesting. I really wanted to watch more. But there are three women that are featured in this special who chose to remain anonymous and they go by the aliases of Nadia, Alice and Phoebe. And then Jordan Miller, who is an ex-girlfriend of Russell's, is also mentioned in the expose. Um so yes let's go in one by one oh i don't want to do this it's like like it just breaks my heart but um so the first person was alice and he referred to her as the child allegedly because she was underage probably because she was 16 years old yeah so they met in 2006 and he was 30 when she was 16 so she had never had a boyfriend before uh, during the time she was recovering from an eating disorder. And apparently the age of consent in the UK is 16, but that means like nothing here. I feel it means nothing and it means nothing. Like let's call it what it is because it's predatory and it's creepy and disgusting, but they proceeded to have a relationship. I like hesitate to call it that because it's just so fucking weird, but they had a relationship for like three months um and during that time he allegedly groomed her controlled her and manipulated her into not giving details to any of her friends or parents and even gave her scripts on how to lie to them wow he even allegedly sent cars to pick her up from high school dude because she's fucking 16 and can't drive wow and apparently i i read that it's That's just sick, so dude. weird. Apparently, she told Alice told her mom that she was going to meet with him. And the mom told Alice, tell him your age so that he's like hesitant to contact uh. you. But he didn't care. And then the mom was like, well, I can't stop her because she's 16 and she could do whatever she wants. But I'm like, what the fuck? Like that would never fly here. Like sure. She's 16. That's the age of consent, but like, she's still a child. She's in high school. The girl hasn't graduated. Like, I don't even want to go there, but like, Maybe that's she was crazy. scared of pushing her towards him more. Maybe. Saying, I don't, don't. want to make, I don't want to make any Either thoughts, way. but like, that's, that's, that's just crazy parenting. Dude. I don't know. I don't know the full details behind that. So I don't want to judge too much. But like, that's insane. That's really sad. Dude, that's <clears throat> 30 and 16. E- like, come on. Like, you have no business. Talking to a 16-year-old at fucking 30, let alone 20. Anyways, so on their first date, she claims that Brand asked her as soon as they met to confirm if she was 16. 
and he was like playing it cool and he said quote i don't give an f if you're 12 i just need to know where i stand legally so i guess wow. he i guess he was happy that she was at least 16 but if well, she was care. 12 she probably wouldn't have cared i don't know what to make of that but i mean do with that what you will and this is coming from um alice this is coming from alice Dang. yeah <clears throat> she details incidents where he would often remove protection during acts of intimacy without her knowledge or consent what led to the end of the relationship was her him essaying her orally she didn't report to the authorities in fear of retaliation from Russell, as well as the fear of being publicly shamed because of her age, which is crazy. Her being shamed for her age when it should be the other way around. Wow. So that's like a common theme in all of these um, victims is they were all either too scared or ashamed to go report it be because of fear of retaliation or fear of what it would do to their career. And it's really sad. The next person is Nadia. <clears throat> they met in 2012 after he divorced Katy Perry. They then proceeded to have a consensual relationship until one day when he invited her over to his home and allegedly tried to get her to have a th Um, When she declined and tried to leave, he R-worded her in his home. One of her friends had taken her to a treatment center to get an R-word kit done and they, f they froze like her evidence or whatever. And um, she did not report because of fear of retaliation from Russell. How old was she? She, uh, she was probably of age. I didn't write it down. I, I don't know if it mentioned it, but mm. I'm sure she was of age. I thought it was like she was only, or he was only going after like underage women. No, but I was looking into it more and it's just like, there's a, like he, I, he's giving like self-report vibes because I Boy, know that back in the day. Like, I know that the times have changed and a lot of what wasn't, what was acceptable then is not acceptable now. But there, like, he joked about R-wording people, R-wording a girl. Like, it doesn't matter what day and age it is. That's never acceptable to say, whether that was 2002 or 2022. You know what I mean? Huh. And so he, he said that, he, he said he joked about R-wording someone, and then he's like, he joked that he killed her too. And he's like, she'll never tell because she's dead. Wow. And so it's like, that's a really fucking bad joke if that's a joke. And then also it just feels like after all this shit that's coming out, it's just like disgusting. And he also made other jokes about like <laughs> bad jokes. <laughs> bad you jokes can look just... you can look into them yourself if you I can tell you after. I just don't yeah. want to get into it now. Yeah. Um but yeah, there's also more um accounts like for nadia and phoebe i kind of made them short um but it just it would have gotten too graphic and i don't want to do that mm. um so moving on to phoebe <clears throat> she met him in 2013 wait so him. there's more from nadia there's like more assault from that um not as i don't think assault but like more um, just more to just the more story. details more details like that happened during prior. it and prior and so yeah they're valid to the story but it's just not safe just for work yeah yeah so phoebe next victim the third person met him in 2013 at an aa meeting she then went on to work for russell and his team on a project that he was working on they worked from different locations including his property in west hollywood she was at his house one day when she realized a member of staff had gone out and left them alone when they were alone in his home, he attempted to essay her and inappropriately touched her lower extremities. On record, she says that there were employees that had arrived at his home to have a meeting about the project. They heard her screaming from outside the house and saw her running out in tears. Years later, she was confronted by one of those people who then apologized for not intervening. He said, I have never forgiven myself for not running inside to save you. I heard you screaming and I didn't know what to do. We were all so scared of him and didn't I didn't do anything and I'm sorry. She didn't report the incident because she feared her career would be affected. That's crazy. Dude, is he coming out now too? Like to defend her? They said that they the I think this was from the Times. They said that they tried to reach out to him for a statement, but he didn't reply. Dang. So I don't know. It's got to show up now. I know. That's Someone, the like, least you know? he can do. But that just goes to show, like, 
the culture of the people around him. Like everyone was scared of him. Yeah. The last person was Jordan Martin, who was an ex-girlfriend of his. They had a six month relationship that began in February 2007 and they lived together. So fast forward a few years and she released a memoir in 2014 detailing the details of dating Russell. Um, in the book, she renamed him as Randall Grand and and herself as Dina. She described him as essaying her and being physically and emotionally abusive towards her. She declined to be interviewed for this investigation, but has confirmed that she stands by her account in this book and says it is an accurate depiction of the relationship and he has never challenged her on its content. Dang. So for one of the people, I think they did try to speak out. I think it was the last girl, Phoebe. I think she tried to speak out and he he like went after her and like threatened her. Ph- and- Phoebe was who then? The person who worked with him. On oh, the, the one on that the ran out? Yeah. Um, and she tried to speak out recently or? No, like after it had happened, I think. Mm. Or she had like told someone and maybe he got had, like got word of it that she told him. She told about it and then he'd like try to so threaten her. her. No, try to threaten her. Like, like keep your mouth shut. So yeah, that's a lot. We actually that's... got that, got through that pretty fast. Thank God. Um, but <laughs> um. Yeah, it's a developing story. So, I mean, there's still a lot unfolding. So we'll have to report back to that. But there's probably going to be more victims coming out in the next couple of days. And, and probably more comedians, too. And probably more That's people getting exposed. I, I immediately thought it was going to be about Chris um, D'Elia, I think I'm saying it right. That D'Elia, I think. D'Elia. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you yeah, had told always, me about that. Yeah, I I had a feeling I was like, it's gonna. Be, I, well, I mean, it still might be him. Yeah, he's yeah. already been accused of this, and I yeah, think, that's true. You know. Yeah, because when you had first told me that, I was like, well, I feel like he already had his cancellation, and like he was already exposed. But mm. you're right; more people could come forward with like more evidence. I have, or even like more uh, different victims this mm-hmm. time. You know, so yeah. I haven't looked into the details of his shit, but mm. w- was he the one on you? Yeah, and then he, he played. A, the, he, he played too, so. Oh. Yeah. Wait, let's finish our thought for the people, so if they don't understand, yeah, he yeah. played a freaking predator. A, no. Yeah, he, like he, he did because he was like going he, after Jenna Ortega's character, and he he was drugged it Jenna? her. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, he, he drugged he, her. And, oh yeah, yeah. Remember? And then he even tied her up in his sex uh-huh. dungeon. Mm-hmm. That's scary. And that's crazy because I think it was after he was accused of like all that essay stuff. So like he that still... came out after that? I don't think so. No, I think th- the you came out and then the allegations came uh-huh. out, and that's when people were like, "What the that's hell? True. He just it played a person for him to go through yeah, that." Yeah, they would have cut and that. then play that same character. Oh no, yeah, yeah. I think I remember it being that way that Dang. his thing came out and then everyone started exposing him. Ooh, so, he's also said some out of pocket shit in his comedy specials. I think. Honestly, listen to what people fucking say in their comedy specials because not all jokes, you know, just have a punchline to them. They stem from the truth. So listen up. I was, you know, who I was scared. I was scared they were gonna come out and expose like Adam Sandler or like a beloved com- no. comedian, and I was like, no, his tour is coming Not out. Not the Sandman. And I'm like, nah, Adam Sandler. Like, Adam Sandler, what are you doing here? <laughs> it's way uh, for, for them, them to play like, Gangnam Style. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was scared it was gonna be him, and I was like, no, don't do this to me. But hey, if it's him, fuck him. You know. You gotta be vigilant and yeah. stay ready to fucking <sighs> stop supporting whoever. That's crazy. I, f- I, I'm just gonna. I fully believe. I mean, obviously, I believe every single victim that comes out, but mm-hmm. like, just, just the vibe that I get from Russell Brand. Like, I don't know. He just gives me really bad vibes, and I believe it. I believe it. Believe the victims. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So also, just to add one quick side note, um, back to what I was saying that, that Russell was saying that he had a promiscuous past. Mm-hmm. Um, so before he was a drug addict, but then he went to um, a clinic. Yeah, it says a clinic, but it 
Maybe they didn't call it that. No, actually, yeah, I think he went to rehab. Mm. But then after that, I don't know if he, like, well, he'll always be a drug addict, even if he hasn't, even if he's, like, sober from yeah. it. But anyway, um, so after that happened and he got help for it, he became a sex addict. And so he admitted that he would sleep with more than 80 women in a month. But then he went to a clinic to receive treatment Damn. in 2005. And then that's when he met Alice in 2006. And Alice is, is the underage girl. Well, 16, but in my eyes, she's underage. And I, he literally I referred to her as the st- child. Like, come the fuck yeah. on. Come on. And it, the, and the shit with Alice, so. like, I don't want to get into it, but the shit with Alice, there's more details, and it's just really disturbing and upsetting. And it's just that's bad. So, that's what's going on, if you didn't know. <laughs> crazy shit um and we'll see what happens with that yeah on a lighter note let's move <laughs> on to miss ponytail and spongebob um <laughs> i was like what SpongeBob? well not spongebob but, yeah. but um broadway spongebob well n- but not spongebob though because we're talking about her ex-husband oh. her and dalton gomez oh, right. filed for divorce today Monday, we're filming this, so a couple days ago when you're seeing this, but they filed for divorce simultaneously. Um, TMZ broke the news, of course, as always. They said that, quote, Ariana Grande is following her in her boyfriend Ethan Slater's footsteps because she's also officially filing for divorce from her husband of two years, and he's filed too citing irreconcilable differences as the reason for their divorce. So we're told everything was worked out before going to the courthouse. Sources say Ariana Grande will cut Dalton a check, and that will be the end of it. So that boy is going to get a fat check in the mail. They had a prenup and everything, as they should. Apparently, the official date of separation was February 20th, 2023. Um, but it took so long to finalize the details of the divorce because the two took their time to iron out details and settle. And now that everyone is officially divorced, Ariana and SpongeBob can live happily ever after in a pineapple under the sea. <laughs> um, apparently, they are living together. They are? Apparently. Dude. Um, she just doesn't care then? Well, if they had separated in February... I know they weren't divorced, but allegedly they were separated already in February, oh and they probably moved in together. Like I know, but I mean about the fact that she just basically she's a homewrecker. I feel like she maybe My she's opinion. like <laughs> making up for the fact that she fucked up so hard with that, and she's like, now I have to commit to this guy because I ruined his fucking life. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so but they're then living that's just together and in divorce too, because she's not in it. But she doesn't know what she's doing. Like, I love the girl, and I was happy for her. But like, when she announced that she was gonna get married, but in my head, I was like, girl, you've only known this man for it like came a out year. Of nowhere. Dude, it's because they were in lockdown together and they started living together oh, during right. COVID, and then like a year later, they announced that they were gonna get married, and I was like, I mean. I think we could have all seen that coming. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> you're not going to fall in love. You don't even know the guy in a year. The hell? Not all the money, not that beautiful ass voice is going to make that marriage that last, after, girl. That was right after Pete Davidson, huh? Yes. So they were engaged. Yes. And like, it just, I don't know. I mean, obviously we're from the outside looking in. We don't know the details, but like even someone that's looking away, looking from afar can see like this. She just the wanted pattern. to get married. Like, she was engaged to P. Davidson. It broke off. And then Im- immediately she's engaged again and then gets married. Like, come on. Come on now. This next story is insane. This is just fucking. I had to include this because this is like probably like a week old news now. But I have not heard anybody talking about it. And like I saw one TikTok and it got swept under the rug. Never heard anything since. And I told you about this and you hadn't heard anything I about it. heard it at all. And I feel like we need to talk about this, okay? Because what the fuck is going on with Ethan Hawke and Maya Hawke and their new film, Wildcat? So Maya Hawke 
is the girl who plays Robin from Stranger Things. And she is casted in an upcoming movie called Wildcat, which is written and directed by her father, Ethan Hawke. The movie is a biographical drama about an American novelist, Flannery O'Connor, that includes a number of adult scenes. Stay with me now. So in addition to starring as O'Connor, Maya also plays six different characters from the author's short stories that are depicted in the film. It's those roles that required her to perform in some intimate scenes, which were, of course, overseen by her father. That's weird, dude. Yes. <laughs> it's weird to begin with, but I feel like it gets even weirder. Like, they might look at it from, like, a profic- professional point, but, like... That's where I'm trying... I, that's where the... I, you know, in the beginning, I'm like, It's a fine okay, line. It's a very fine line. And that's where... I just feel like lines were crossed. Hmm. I feel like lines were blurred. And I think it's weird. It's it's a lot of weird things happening. So here's here's where it gets more weird. <laughs> um, Ethan insists that he had no qualms about directing his daughter in graphic adult scenes and said, quote, we were so comfortable with it. I couldn't care less. <laughs> it, it's that. It's really that. Like he might as well just say it. I loved it. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> He might as well said, damn, she looked like her mother. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, I took it to work. <laughs> oh, I crossed the line, huh? <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? Like, okay. Dude. It's one thing to direct a sex scene. Like, that's weird, but in a lot of scenes where they film sex scenes there's always an intimacy coordinator like no one's actually having sex like there's a pillow in between that we know of that we know of there's like usually a pillow in between the two people like they try to make it as not awkward as possible but then it says like graphic sex scenes, and so that they don't touch too they yeah they they have a separator oh you mentioned The the pillow yeah yeah um but but then it specifies graphic sex scenes. So I'm like, that's weird because then the like imagination that, just runs. Lady wild. Gaga and Adam Driver in that one movie. Oh. Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 probably more than that. Well, that wasn't even that graphic. That was just no. Really I guess long. it was just yeah. It was just, just really like, long yeah. and uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, like, and then to say that we were so comfortable with it, like there wasn't even a little awkwardness. You're telling me there wasn't even a little awkwardness. Oh, it was what, just a normal Tuesday. What is going on at home? <laughs> what the fuck are y'all doing at home? Like, okay, so that's weird, right? So Maya said that they had an intimacy coordinator on set for her scene partner's comfort. Not for her comfort, but it's like, okay, maybe you're this, like, very... Who's the, who's the partner? I don't know. You know. But maybe you're this very professional actress and, and you feel like you don't need one. Or maybe you filmed a, mul- a multiple amount of sex scenes and you, you this isn't your first rodeo. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, fine. Whatever. But... <clears throat> Ethan said that he thought the dad. Ethan said that he great performance. Thought it might hold on, <laughs> hold on. We'll get to that. No. Ethan said that he thought it might have been weird for Maya's scene partners, and that they wanted to take care of both of them as well. Okay. Maya said we made sure to have an intimacy coordinator on set for them, so that they felt safe and comfortable, and not like they were being spied on. And then Ethan added, right after she said that, he's like, buy some creepy dad. She said, I don't want it to feel like we're being spied on. He's like, buy some creepy dad, a.k.a. me. Like, you're making it weird. You're making it very weird, sir. I need you to leave the room. (sighs) Yeah, no, I, I just think they were, like, trying to make it seem that they were too comfortable like they they were trying to say we're comfortable with it but like they <laughs> they went about it the wrong way they said the wrong thing mm. you don't think so you think it was well see like i'm there's just something trying weird? to i'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt but like the deeper i dove into it it gets a little bit weird and i don't like it i don't like what i'm uncomfortable i don't want to sit here and tell you this is i'm there, reporting this more, against my or... own will a little bit let a tad hear, bit let me hear it a little bit. <laughs> um, so, so I just added because this, this is funny. Like, what the hell is going on? I saw this headline when I was doing more research about it, and it says from a People article. It says 
Ethan Hawke says, daughter Maya gives one of my favorite performances I've ever seen in their new film. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Why is that, sir? Hmm. Okay. Maybe it's innocent. Maybe he's not talking about that. Maybe he's talking about the rest of the film. Okay, fine. Let's move on. Wait, yeah. Did they say where, like, which part he was talking about? I didn't read it. I just saw the the headline. I thought it was very comical, <laughs> to be fair. Okay. But Cause I'm, it's weird. Yeah, I'm just saying he didn't say that for that because that's, come on. That's... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I really am. So... Then I kept doing my research and I found that there was this blind item about them. Do you know what a blind item is? Never heard of it. So I have heard of this term on TikTok only, but apparently it's a term that is used like in the media realm. Um, It is a blind item is a news story typically in a gossip column in which the details of the matter are reported while the identities of the people involved are not revealed. So that's basically what I've seen this one TikToker do on TikTok. She's always like, um, what does she say? She always has a tagline, so you'll know it if I say it for the audience watching. Um, she's like, oh, she's like, you want more? I'll give you more. And then she like goes into talking about blind items, about like all kinds of celebrities. And the shit that she says is crazy. And a lot of the things that she says has come true. Like, like someone will report like, oh, uh, allegedly Dalton Gomez, like she had this before. She's like, Dalton Gomez is seen with other girls. And allegedly Ariana Grande is, is like, they're getting a divorce. And then boom, they got a divorce. Like. So she said that before? mm Mm-hmm. So like, I don't know where she gets these, from what gossip column she's getting it from. But a lot of the sources that, that are being reported are typically they come true. Or like they're they're true, mm-hmm. you know, they're basically true. Um, so there was a blind item about Maya and Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman, which is Maya's mom. Uma Thurman, very famous actress. Um, so the blind item went like this. It said, the very tall former A-list actress didn't want her ex-husband to direct a graphic scene involving his daughter because she thinks it's super creepy. Thank you, Uma. Thank you, if this is true. (laughs) Especially considering how young the nanny was that he was sleeping with while married to the actress. Some tea is being spilled here. Sorry, we'll dive into that later. She lost the fight, though, and the scene was filmed, and Dad loved watching it. Dude, that's... I don't... What in the incest? What in the yeehaw? I don't know. Okay. So that was a lot. But then I I was like, who is this nanny? What are they talking about? So I dove in a little bit deeper. Mm. So speaking of the nanny, a woman by the name of of Ryan Shaw Hughes was originally the nanny for Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke until Ethan Hawke slept with her and then later married her. So, yes. Did a little digging found that she was their nanny in 2003, making her 20 years old at the time. Ethan and Uma separated in 2003 amid reports that he had been having an affair with the nanny. Their divorce was granted in 2005, and Ethan went on to marry Ryan in 2008 when she was 25. Who else is currently 25 years old? His daughter, Maya Hawk. Nah, that really doesn't mean anything, but, like, I mean, they have a point. How old was he back then? Uh, I don't know. When he was sleeping with her? Like, 30. Like, 30? Okay. So, it isn't no 30 30 and 16. No, but she was still pretty young. Yeah, she was young. She was still pretty young. Um... A lot of weird shit happening. Oh, what the fuck is going on? Mm. See, I really wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt, but mm. yeah, it sounds weird, dude. So weird. 
I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what to make of it. I really, I, I, I as well as you, did try to give them the benefit of the doubt in the beginning, and it's just a lot of weird shit just kept piling on, and it just gives me weird. Just gives me weird. I don't like it. Hmm. Mm, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to move on from that. I don't either. A lot to unpack. A lot to. It's a lot to unpack. It is. Will you be watching Wildcat? Um, I will. Will you? I I will. I want to see what oh, that guy saw. I want to see and that said. Too. You're right. That I want remark. You know. Mm-hmm. Too. Like, mm-hmm. I think that the movie came out. Um, oh wait, it's out already. Well, I think it premiered at like one of those film festivals. Oh. Um, and I think people were saying that it was really bad. That like oh. her acting was not the greatest. Oh, and, really? Yeah. I liked her in Stranger Things. I liked her too, but I, I mean, I don't know. I feel, I don't know. I just, she's a very big Nepo baby. Like she has two huge parents in the industry. So I feel like it's easy for her to get roles like she that. She makes music too. She does. Have you listened to any of her music? I wasn't saying I was. I haven't listened to any of her music. I don't even know if it's good. That's true. I did see her in that one. I mean, she. I feel like she's she's good, you know. But like she's she's not. You know, I'm not trying to hate on her. Or anything. <laughs> I'm not trying to hate on her. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. Like, I I just feel like people are saying that her performance wasn't that great, and I, I mean, I'm not trying to hate, but I feel like maybe it wasn't. <laughs> I can see that it would Will you be, be bad. Watching it then? Um, now that you say that, I think I will because I want to see what kind of graphic scenes he, this man is directing. Do, do you know when when it comes out? I don't know, but they're not gonna. I don't think they're. Oh, going, is it too soon? Well, I don't. No, I'm just saying I don't think they're going to promote it because of the whole writer strike going on and oh, like they true. they can't promote it if they're under contract. See, I'm getting Wildcat 2022 film and 2023. Try that film, one. So I think it's that one. So yeah. there's already one. Hey, is that no? It's not Liam Neeson. And Steve. It's already out? Um, no, just looking at the cast. It's, uh, is it out? Initial release September 1st. Oh. So it should be Maybe out, you right? could stream it. I don't know. Want to watch. Let's see. Reviews. Reviews. See, look at that review. 53 on Tomatoes. But then again, I feel like tom- Tomatoes you can't even really trust. 84% like this movie on Google. I really want to watch it just to see what that guy saw and directed as of that. Also, just just now that you mentioned that, there's a totally Something there's else? a discussion that is to be had. Like, we're not parents, but if you were a parent, that would obviously be uncomfortable. Yeah, you know no what I'm saying? It's one thing to talk to your kids about sex and that's fine and be open about it because it, it's healthy. Yeah, like maybe from a professional point of view, you'll be able to do it. But like you'll still be like in the back of your mind, that's like my son, my daughter right there, you know, mm-hmm. that I'm recording, it's, filming, directing. No, I just don't. I can't. I, there's no. Because cause you know how like actors and actresses have to see their spouses do that too in movies yes i f- but that's different it's sort of, yeah i know but it's that's different. So I know different. different but it's similar in a way but it, it's different no no it's, it's different baby I still it's different think, no it's no different. no i'm saying it's still up there like it's it's worse than that I no think. because like when you're seeing like well most actors and actresses i'm sure like like a part they're human so i'm sure a part of them is like like ah oh, i don't want to see that you know mm-hmm. but they're like professional enough to like move past it and also at the same time that's a person that you're already intimate with you're not supposed to be intimate with your child so that's fucking weird for you to see them be intimate you know what i mean regardless Mm -hmm. if it's a fucking movie or what like you see what i'm saying it's different (laughs) that is our episode lots of ups lots of downs lots of of, um... twists and turns what were you going to say? 
You're going to make an incest joke or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of <laughs> Oh, no. We are stepping it up every single episode. And I hope that you are liking what you see. As always, make sure to leave your suggestions in the comments. Follow us on social media. Our socials are in the description box down below as well as on the screen. Um, yeah. We're doing a thing. We're having fun. Mm -hmm. What's doing the damn thing? And so we will see you next week. Bye.